Nearly 150 animals were confiscated from a large-scale breeding operation in Carroll County. Operation Noah's Ark, a raid here to rescue dozens of cats, dogs, and other creatures. Several dogs, cats, chickens, goats, rabbits, and even a zebra were found at the site. Several dead animals were found as well. A tip led the Animal Rescue Corps and Carroll County Sheriff's Office to a property in Atwood. The animals didn't have access to food or water and are suffering from various health issues. Gas produced from animal waste was the highest they've ever seen. So April 8th, 2018, um, we were on the property in Atwood, Tennessee, and it was a typical puppy mill. We did what we always do. We collected the evidence, we took care of the animals and got them back here, and we had no, no idea at that point what was in front of us. We knew that we had done our job, and we knew that the evidence was there. What we didn't know was that we were in for a fight. Past year for Animal Rescue Corps has been our most challenging year ever in our almost nine year history. Last April when we began Operation Noah's Ark, we had already been in nearly continuous operation for a year. But because there are very few organizations that can respond to a case of this size and complexity, we decided to go ahead and take the case. We imagined that the case would take less than a month at an emergency shelter are stuck in cages due to an ongoing legal battle. Tonight, News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen continues to cover this story as volunteers take care of the pets on Christmas Eve. After nursing some of the sick animals back to health, the breeders hit the nonprofit with a lawsuit demanding the animals back. Due to an impending court case, the animals can't be adopted just yet. They've kind of appealed every ruling as we're going along, kind of trying to wait out the clock here and see if we can uh, run out of money and fold, but uh, that's not going to happen. The ARC has spent over half a million dollars taking care of these guys. It was, a, it was a long, hard year. April 8th was the first day. From then on, we had several different milestones. We had um, court hearings that we thought this will be the day that we'll, we'll win today. And then that would come and go and we'd find ourselves with another fight. And so the next court date, we'd think today's the day we're gonna win and another hurdle to jump over. So we kind of stopped looking at the next date and just focused on now and stopped hoping for the future and just kept focusing on what we had here now. But having animals in our care for over a year, we had to think very differently. Without volunteers, we can't do what we do, and our volunteers make this organization what it is. There are no days off in an animal shelter. You have to be here every day. They need volunteers all the time, Christmas, New Year's, every day. In any normal shelter, anywhere more than maybe three months there can really be harmful for the animals, for their sanity, for their well-being. Our animals have actually been doing better than expected in this environment. We've really turned that around. It's been a rough road though because these are animals, these are not things, they're not TVs that you stick on a shelf and wait for the next court date. These are living beings, and so for the laws to still view them as property, they're not objects. You can't just dust them off in two years and expect them to be the same, they're not. They change, they change every day. In the state of Tennessee and in many states, there are two components to the prosecution of a animal cruelty case. There is the criminal prosecution for the cruelty aspect, and then there is what is called a bond and forfeiture law. This bond and forfeiture law is designed to make those individuals responsible pay for the cost of care while those animals are tied up in the legal system, or to forfeit the animals after 10 days. Bond and forfeiture laws are critical to protect those that rescue animals in this state and across the country. From the pretrial hearing, through motions to dismiss evidence, and appeal after appeal, Animal Rescue Corps had to prepare motions and make appearances in nearly a dozen legal proceedings. In most cases, the defendants faced with the actual cost of care and medical treatment for their animals typically surrender in a matter of weeks. The defendants in this case had 
resources that allowed them to pursue every possible delay and legal tactic to avoid their responsibility in either resolving this case or paying for the cost of care for these animals as the law requires. We also found ourselves in a position where we had to defend the constitutionality of the bond and forfeiture law. Animal Rescue Corps has had to bear the cost and the responsibility of preserving this law to protect the act of rescuing throughout the state. And the defendants successfully avoided paying one dime towards the hundreds of thousands of dollars of care required to return these animals to health and to care for them for over 14 months. There were times when resources were very thin, times when we were taxing our human resources more than we would ever want to. However, the alternative was unthinkable. Should we fail, these animals that we had brought back to health, these animals that had known love and kindness for the first time, would be returned to the individuals who had abused them to begin with. It weighs on you every single day. Every morning you wake up, your biggest fear is the animals will be returned to them. And we weren't gonna let that happen. We could not fail. Animals that came in as puppies were now adults. And after a year of not knowing what it was like to be part of a family or live in a home, and with no end in sight to any of the multiple fronts of the legal work on this case, we made the unprecedented decision to begin fostering some of the animals with our dedicated volunteers. I have been with the Operation Noah's Ark Rescue since April of last year, pretty much on a weekly basis. I met Birdie the night after that they had um, come into the rescue. I was just kind of scanning through the kennel, seeing what what came in and, and Birdie caught my eye. The very first day when I came back, I told Kim, you know, I don't know what happened with these dogs, but if they go into rescue, we would like to adopt Dewey. Thinking that that might be a few weeks away. And of course, then it was more than a year. Just fell in love with her pretty much from day one. and just felt like we had just had this connection and kind of like she chose me. So you'd see them all the time and you pet him and of course he was growing up and getting to be bigger. She had three puppies, I believe, with her and she was just the only one that was just, she, all she wanted to do was sit on my lap. But getting her home it was amazing seeing all the different things she had not been able to experience, even as much enrichment as we try to give them up here. First time we had her home, she was sleeping at the foot of the bed and kept coming over to me every, seemed like few minutes, nudging me and I guess she'd never seen a human being sleeping before. Well, I remember the first day we got her, they were like, send me a video of her seeing grass, because it was gonna be her first time. And I live on seven acres in the woods. It's just all these new things she's had to adapt to, but she's adapted really well. It's adorable watching her experience all these things for the first time. One of the hardest parts in all of this was knowing that there were other animals on additional properties that the defendants had and knowing the conditions that we came upon a year ago, we knew that those animals were going to be living in those same conditions. You can't just go onto that property and rescue them. Uh, you have to show probable cause that they are in some way abusing the animals or that there's some type of crime being committed. A year later, we were able to get that probable cause. This morning, first responders rescued dozens of dogs from what they call deplorable conditions, and this is linked to another high-profile animal cruelty case. Now, these animals join others already there rescued a year ago, April. Now, that case remains in litigation, so those animals still cannot be placed because they are in evidence. Putnam County Sheriff's Department went to the property today to serve an arrest warrant for the individual indicted on 10 care fraud and found the animals living in um, what they described as deplorable conditions. Immediately began to put together the team and the resources and we were on scene within a matter of hours. We found 42 live animals and one dead animal on this property in conditions equally as gruesome as the 148 animals that we had found the previous April. It was definitely a puppy mill. Animals in need of uh, veterinary care, 
animals living in their own feces and urine, animals with clear medical issues that haven't been treated. Even through the chaos, the, the, the rain and the, and the uphill and downhill and mud and, and everything else, we don't stop until the last animal is off the property. We didn't realize at that moment that that would be the key to bringing resolution to the entire case. Rather than face immediate jail time, the defendants decided to enter into a plea agreement with authorities in Carroll County. They have pled guilty to felony and misdemeanor cruelty and agreed to surrender all of the animals from both cases, 191 animals in all. As part of their plea deal, and in order to secure the surrender of the animals immediately, Animal Rescue Corps agreed to waive further efforts to collect under the bond and forfeiture law ending any jeopardy that this law may have faced in the ongoing court process. No matter how difficult it was, we were never prepared to give up. We've always won quickly, and for this to take this long was huge. Um, not only huge for us, but huge for animal rescue. Had this case lost, it would have changed the face of rescue. Not just for Tennessee, but for everywhere, I believe. And so. Losing wasn't even an option for us. We went to court on May 22nd, and that is the day that they surrendered all of the animals. My first placement, I guess, was to our fosters, and that literally started as I got in the car from the courthouse. It was amazing to get back those text messages for people saying, I can't believe it's over, thank God. And, um, and knowing that we weren't gonna have to fight any longer or make them stay in a kennel any longer than they had to and that they could finally be a family member and not just um, a commodity. We always were waiting, waiting, waiting for mama. Are we gonna get her? Is it gonna happen? I remember we were driving back from East Tennessee and we got the email saying, you can come get mama. We went straight there. It felt amazing. She had already, you know, joined my other dogs and, and fits into our clan pretty well, um, but it was it was pretty exciting to go home and to know that she would never have to go back. She ran right to me and latched onto me. Um, I think I remember Kim actually saying, look at her, she knows you're her mommy, and uh, it was just heaven. It was very overwhelming and exciting and couldn't wait to get home and officially see Birdie, my new dog. For a year, we've been looking and praying for this outcome, for them to get to move on to their forever homes. But when it actually happens, they, they've long since, I think, changed. They were no longer shelter dogs, the Noah's Ark dogs. They've been pets that were just stuck here at the shelter for a while. I pretty much had everybody placed in, in two days. It was a feeling of relief because it, the, it's the first time in a year that I've felt a sense of peace because I knew that Everybody had a place, everybody would be moving out, and we could just decompress. Animals are leaving the building now every day, and it's a little different this time. Typically, we don't have a chance to get this attached in two weeks, three weeks. These animals have been with us for over a year. They are like our animals now. And so saying goodbye to them is a little more emotional this time than it's ever been before. They're just so appreciative and their love, it's like they're constantly saying thank you. And it's just, it really is like one of the most rewarding things in my life is to see a dog like her that's lived in a cage her whole life and get to see grass. I mean, it gives me goosebumps even talking about it. The size and duration of this operation required resources on a level that we've never before been able to assemble. It required nearly 2,000 volunteers. It required the compassionate generosity of every Animal Rescue Corps donor and the use of all of our financial reserves. And even then, without several major sponsors, including the Bissell Pet Foundation, the Mental Insight Foundation, and the Animal Legal Defense Fund, we would not have made it. I've never been more proud to work with any group of individuals ever than the Animal Rescue Corps volunteers. Their commitment in this operation was exemplary. They never gave up, they never stopped. Many people put their lives on hold. They missed holidays, birthdays, weekdays, evenings with their loved ones and their own companion animals. 
When I would say thank you, again and again, their response is, don't worry, we've got this. We'll be here as long as it takes.